Today we're going to talk about this sword, which is a Type 18 sword, uh, using the Oak Shop typology, with a Type U pommel. Now this sword type was popular in uh, both England and in the German lands as well. Um, so you'll find examples from both these places, probably up in Scandinavia as well as in Magic. Uh, this pommel type is very, very distinctive. Now obviously it comes up here as almost part of the grip uh, and is wasted, and then this, I don't know, oval type form. Uh, here with a bit of firework, often quite decorated, uh, so with little bits of firework, sort of tracing lines around the edges and so on. A uh, wire-bound grip to the top half of the grip, very typically late 15th century. Uh, and then a leather grip, as you would expect. And the sewn-up seam here, a little bit of decorative work on the front and the back. Downturned guard, um, actually quite a thin guard. Uh, snugly fitting scabbard and then the Type 18 blade. So what you've got here is a very strong blade in this case, actually quite broad, but it starts wide and it, it, it tapers to the tip, but with, um, <clears throat> uh, it's, it's it convex, it goes outwards slightly. Uh, so rather than straight down or any other form or like a Type 14 which comes in slightly, this is the way, designation of a Type 18. Uh, diamond section, uh, very strong actually, it's about, um, uh, three eighths of an inch, so nine and a half mil at the hilt here, then tapering down, but uh, with a steady distal st taper, but staying down till about four, four and a half mil close to the tip. So it's a really good stabbing blade as well as a cutting blade. Um, overall, because this is a stout blade, it makes for a fairly heavy uh, sword at um, about uh, three pounds nine ounces, I think, so about 1.6 kilos, something like that. Um, but again, it's uh, a 36 inch blade or just a little bit over, so um, 91 centimetres ish, something like that. Uh, again, some firework here. Uh, lovely sword, really, um, very nice. Decorative tang button here with a twisted finial on it. And then, if we come to the scabbard, the top third here between the two hangers is decorated. Very often, scabbards were done like this. In Usually it wasn't the entire scabbard that was decorated at this period, it would just be a small section of it. Um, so this is just with a stamp decoration, then two f uh, fabricated iron hangers, and then a chape as well. So uh, I've looked more for German inspiration on this, so they did like their very gross, very heavy firework details on here, so I've done that. Um, and then again, uh, a stamped, uh, stamped straps to the scabbard um, hanger. Nice bronze fittings there so that you can wear the scabbard belt separately. So the way that is put on just comes around. You do that up. I've got no stamp, no uh, holes punched in it at the moment. And then that is brought around here, like so. So you have the two buckles that form that. And then that strap, which is a little bit dangly, you just tie it out of the way, uh, as you would expect in a very medieval style, really. So if you can get the thing set, you've got a belt slider here on the back, so you just set it to the right point. You'll find that as these belts come over your butt at the back, it holds the thing fairly tight to your body, so it doesn't allow it to swing around too much, uh, which is of course what you want. Now, just taking that off, I'll just show you a little more detail on the back of the scabbard here. So then coming to the back, we've obviously got the stitch line going up the back. Now notice, the clean-up job I've done on the back of these fittings is not remotely as good as it is on the front. They didn't care. It's the front that they wanted. That's what you're showing off to people. That's what you're showing off to yourself. Isn't this lovely? You don't show in the back. So this is done in the really in the style of originals, which is it's done. It's competently done. It's nicely done, solid, everything else. Is it beautifully finished? No, it's not on the back face. They just weren't. So that's it. Uh, Type 18 sword with a U pommel, uh, all fabricated by myself, scabbard, the fittings and the sword itself. Thank you. So now we'll have a close up look at the sword. If we start at the top here, we've got the twisted tang button and then going up to the very distinctive shaped type U pommel. Uh, on obviously to the wire bound grip there and the, the quillens just downturned um, and the carved leather grip as we go. Bit of far work on the quillens there. Now if we just whip up we can see the first of these fittings here. Now this is very typically 
German with its very sort of coarse, very bold file work spy, uh, riser detail on it. Some stamped work on the scabbard. Going down, uh, just coming up to the second riser now, and then as we whip down, we'll just come quickly on to the, the third uh, part of it, which is the shape, a little bit out of focus there. I'm sorry about that. Now, time for a new camera. Now, if we come back up again, we'll just have a look at the back of these fittings here. As I mentioned, medieval times, it's all about show. It's all about what people can see at the front. They're not that interested in what's going on at the back. So people didn't spend the time finishing the components on the back. So again, in, with that in mind, that's what I've done here. It's not that they're crude or they're badly made or anything like that, but there's just no requirement to finish them. So that's it.